Okay, so today I'm here with my friend Train with Wayne, as known on Instagram, otherwise known as Wayne. Thank you for being here, man. Thank you for inviting me over, Simon. Yeah. Happy to be here. So, uh, Wayne is a personal trainer for the past how many years? Wow, um, I've been a trainer since 2014, so nine, nine years. Wow, so nine almost years. a decade of uh, experience training individuals. Yeah, and almost. Thumb fights, yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm assuming you are uh, doing six figures a year doing personal training right now, right? For the past four, three to four years, yes. Okay, so about four years you've been at consistent six figures. Yep, you can say that. Is this more work than the average nine to five or is this less work? How would you describe your current work life? As trainers, what we do is we, we trade time for money. So if the more you work, the more money you get. If you work from nine to five as a trainer, you probably, you definitely get more money than someone who works nine to five. And, but the life of a trainer is a bit different because if a client wants to train at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m., you have to wake up at seven. You can't say, oh, I only work nine because that's my schedule. I mean, you can, once you have the luxury, once you build your clientele base, you can say no. But if you're just starting out, you have to take whatever clients that you can have. Mm. Yeah, so I would say trainer, don't, don't expect a nine to five life. If you want a lot of money, you got to just work mm. as many hours as you possibly can, at least at the start. Okay, wow, well, that was uh, interesting. So you would say you're working on a flexible time schedule right now, and it is sort of under your control depending on whether the client is there or not. But you prefer what you're doing right now as compared to working the average nine to five office job, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you are, you are pretty much your own boss. You control the timing where you want to work, where you don't want to work. You can take breaks and holidays whenever you want to. And everything yeah, is on your own schedule. So yeah, I wouldn't... Once you once you like have tried this life, I don't think you want to go back to 9 to 5. Okay, yeah. okay. I mean, not for, not for me at least. Right, right. What got you into personal training in the first place? To be honest, I'm, I'm pretty vain. So when I started working out, I saw the results. I like how I look in the mirror and I never look back. You started working out, getting uh, results and just pushing for more. And this is, I think my yeah, 13th year into working out. So you've been working out for 13 years, but you've been a personal trainer for almost 10 years. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so the first three years that you worked out, you decided like, okay, I'm going to be a personal trainer. What, what sparked the trigger into being a personal trainer? Um, I mean, well, I was really working out. So, and a friend told me, hey, since you really work out, why don't, why don't you try like, just, just join the gym, you know, since you really work out and you can do it for passion and money. And I thought, yeah, I mean, at that time I was just fucking around, was doing like random stuff. I didn't, I was young, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I how, thought, yeah. how old were you exactly at that um, time? Wow, that's a good question. I was 24 when I first joined the gym. And now you are? I'm um, 33. Nice, yeah. nice. Thanks for A man me. never reviews his age. But <laughs> really? For Simon? Oh. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> on it. <laughs> on it to know you. I thought, I thought that was a woman thing. Or is it a woman? A woman never reveals their weight. Well, you know what they say. Equality these days. So Equality. Gotta respect that. Okay. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Carnivore or vegan? And why or why not? Like my preference for women or what? No. <laughs> carnivore mm. or veganism uh, in terms of diet? Uh, so there's the carnivore family. There's the vegan family. And then there's the in-between paleo. What is the optimal diet? in your opinion, to achieve the best physique possible? Well, I mean, I always think the balanced way is the best way to go. So if you are in like the vegan camp, I mean, you can do that for religious purpose, for whatever reason, there's, you can go there. But of course, if you want to optimize your health, there's a lot more work to be done if you're a vegan compared to if you can just eat meat, vegetables, dairy products. Yeah, and if you're only um, eating meat if you're carnivore um to be honest i haven't done much res research on it but you'll be lacking a lot of the vitamins minerals Fiber. from vegetables so probably you can supplement that with vitamins but yes there's a lot of supplements that needs to be added if you want to optimize your health so if you are in either extreme like end of the spectrum you will need extra work just to make sure your body is still healthy if you if you have a balanced diet i think that's still the best that's what i do yeah, have some meat, have some vegetables, make sure you get all your nutrients. In your opinion, who are clients that have had the fastest results in body transformation? Who are these people and why are they achieving results as fast as they can? 
Okay, based on my experience, if you are doing it for intrinsic reasons, that's where you will succeed no matter what because it comes from within. It's not from ex some external forces yeah. or some external reasons uh, that's superficial. Yeah. So if you have something uh, that comes from within, like for example, uh, I need, I want to do this for my family. I want to do this for my daughter, my newborn. I want to lead a good example because that's in intrinsic. So you will actually have the motivation to wake up in the morning early if you need to. Mm. to go down to the gym to work out because you know deep down okay I'm doing it for deeper reason mm. instead of something superficial okay maybe if I go to the gym maybe uh, I'll look better in three months I kind of want it I kind of don't want it so based on my experience these are the clients who won't they won't they will, most of the time they will drop out after a while they won't reach they won't get what they want because they kind of want it but they don't want it so intrinsic deep reason is the reason why they achieve the transformation yeah for those who actually achieve their results the majority of your clients what's their profile like in terms of um, the reasoning that you just mentioned okay because i'm based mainly in the cbd area so most of them are white collars uh, working professionals for my for my target audience um most of them are between the age of 30 to 45. okay how do you get your clients usually nowadays do you get it from your instagram do you run ads what are your sources at the start i did paid ads in order to build my clientele but at this point it's mostly just organic referrals mm. from IG mostly organic nice yeah. that's a very sustainable way right yeah I mean ultimately that has to be the way if you want to sustain okay yeah. awesome how many clients do you have do you have a number the active clients that you're training every month on average I don't really want to review the numbers but I can tell you like roughly how many hours I'm doing per okay. month yeah um, doing between 100 to 200 hours per month oh wow yeah. Okay. Yeah, 100 to 200. Nice. Yeah, Easy. because there's peak, peak, peak months. There's like months where everyone's traveling. So it fluctuates. There's no like really consistent months. In terms of like personal training, I notice people drop off their training schedule after January. In your own uh, experience, when is the peak in like people wanting to train the most like January? And then when mm. does it get very quiet and when does it restart again? That's a good question. Contrary to popular belief, January, most people are still traveling. So most of them, they will not come back in January. I would say maybe late February, March, that's where things start to pick up in the gym. Mm, late yeah. February to March. Okay. Yeah, around March. December, that's where everyone travels. I mean, at least in Singapore, um, mm. because a lot of my clients are, are expats as well. So they fly back to the country to for Christmas. So December and even the locals, they are they're traveling. So December will be quiet. So in between, yeah, it's good. Summer, some of them, if you go for summer holidays, I would say December and January, this is the quiet month. Okay, December and January is a quiet month. And then everything in between is normal. It doesn't go that low. So December and January is a quiet month. Yeah. Wow, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I mean, this is Singapore context. I don't know how it works in other, other countries. Yeah, mm. But this is what it is in Singapore. Okay. In terms of uh, clients that are very troublesome, do you have any horror stories to share? <laughs> horror stories? Um, most of them are nice. So horror story. Thankfully, I don't think I have bad experience okay. in the gym. Yeah, but I think most of them are very nice. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, interesting. So I'm assuming you filter out your clients very well before you take them on, right? Yeah, maybe I filter them or maybe they filter me. Okay. Yeah. So Because I think like the clients, they kind of like will pick a trainer who they think they will feel comfortable with because it's a one-to-one -one relationship so if i don't if like for example if you want a trainer you probably find someone that has a similar interest as you maybe look a certain way that you want to look has a certain behaviors that you you probably want to emulate mm. yeah so you will probably look for someone along your wavelength okay. yeah i mean that's where ig helps because you get to showcase like who you are as a person yeah. then people will decide whether they like your vibes or they don't uh, you would say your personal branding online is what filters the clients and then when they come to you they already know what they want is yeah that right they they kind of know what they want yeah. okay okay you have like quite a bit of following on your instagram right now right about 18.3 18.3 wow yeah. but yeah how long did it take you to grow such a huge following on your instagram i started instagram i think way back 2013 or 2014 but i wasn't using it like what i'm using it for right now at first it's just like personal life topless photos of myself nice, nice. Uh, nice. yeah nothing business related i didn't really promote myself as a pt it's only the recent few years when i decided okay I, I, when you really need to start like focusing on like building the business part i think that comes with like 
personal growth as well. I was just a kid. I didn't know what I wanted. Yeah. Then, um, yeah, recent years, I started to really focus on putting out content that will help grow my business. What are the content that has helped you grow your business so far? Or what are the content that has gone viral? Maybe you can share with us some strategies that you're using right now. For IG, reels are all the, the rave right now. Everyone's trying to use reels instead of the traditional photos in order to go viral because I think that's what IG is pushing. Mm. The algorithm is pushing at the moment. You just got to be consistent, got to be put out a lot of content, even though some of them probably is not going to be a hit. But every once in a while, if your content is good and all the optics are right, the filters are right, the caption is right, everything is on point, which I mean, you're way better than me at this. I think so. Yeah, yeah of course, you're the, you're the pro in this. And yeah, once in a while, once in a while um, if everything, if the formula is right, it will go viral. You never know, you know, you just need to keep pushing out content on a regular basis, which I need to do more often. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So IG reels. Yeah, that's true. I agree. What about TikTok? TikTok, uh, I'm not too active on it because firstly, I think that's not my target audience. Mm. They, they are probably the younger audience where personal training probably isn't on their mind right now. Mm. Financially, it's not within their capability to do that. Yeah, so I, I don't really concentrate much on TikTok. I mean, it's a good platform to start growing your audiences. You never know. I'm, I'm sure there are people who are above the age of 30 that's using TikTok. But yeah, at this point, I'm not focusing too much on TikTok. To hit six figures a year as a personal trainer, just Instagram is enough. Firstly, if you want to really succeed as a trainer, all this marketing and all, it's just, it's extra stuff. If your service is not good, you're not good as a trainer, you don't know what you do. You can spend thousands and hundred thousand dollars on marketing. You can get a client for maybe three months. Then after that, what? If they know you're not a good trainer, they're not going to continue. So ultimately, I think it still boils down to being good at what you do. You have to be a good trainer at, at heart, at, at the core. Then you can start to expand on that, start to do your marketing, start to get referrals, paid ads, yeah, and expand from there. But the core has to be solid. You have, have to be fundamentally a good trainer. Yeah, if not, it will just fall like a house of cards. Okay, makes sense. What makes a good trainer in your opinion? Firstly, you must know your basic anatomy well. You must be able to connect to your, your clients. They need to know that you have their best interests at heart. Okay. And of course, you need to know what you're doing. Okay. Uh, Training-wise, diet-wise. And yeah, if you are sociable if they like you as a person that's even better yeah that's where the relationship will really develop over the years and they will be a long-term customer instead of like just a one-time like three months relationship yeah. so would you say instead of being a personal trainer you should be a personal relationship trainer well and the relationship <laughs> in between the words personal training and that yeah. would amplify your results well never say never you know maybe i will i might venture or in the other stuff Okay. In the future, we never know. Okay. Cool, cool. So that so basically, the relationship you develop with your client and the fundamentals you have as a trainer is what makes you a good trainer. Yep. Okay. That, that's the, the essentials. How do you feel about the majority of trainers in Singapore? That's a good... Freelance that's trainers. A, freelance trainers. Freelance okay. trainers. Okay. So for freelance trainers, in order to be a successful freelance trainer, long term, you have to be good at what you do. So they probably fulfill most of the, the essentials that I just spoke about. Because if you're not good enough, within one year, all your clients will drop out and you probably have to go back to working for a gym where they will give you the leads, they will market everything for you. But of course, they're going to take a big percentage of your, your salary. So if you're a freelance trainer and doing it for long, some time, they are good. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Okay, so basically, how long you've been in the industry as a freelance is what? shows that you're good. Yep. Then, would you say that um, most trainers don't need certification to be a personal trainer? Okay, in Singapore, because the trainer, the fitness training industry is not regulated. So technically, even if you have no certification, you can be a trainer. You just, you just go to a weekend course, you get like certified over the weekend, then you can just call yourself a trainer. You can start training people. But probably if you don't get results and you end up injuring them, then you won't, your business is not sustainable. Mm. So ultimately, you still have to be good at what you do. Your question is, um, do you need certificate? No. If you don't have, you can still be a trainer. Mm. Yeah. In Singapore. Which countries are, are there regulations? I don't really know mm. about this. 
uh, the, the Western part, like Anglo-Saxon countries, Australia, UK, US, all mm -hmm. of them are regulated. So you need to, you need to have certification mm -hmm. before you can call yourself a trainer. Okay, yeah. interesting. I've heard of the statistic that in Australia, about 25% of the population has a gym membership as compared to Singapore. Do you know how many Singapore has in terms of percentage? Wow. That's a good question. I have no idea. Take a guess. In Singapore. Yeah, um, out of 100%, how many percent do you think has a gym membership in Singapore? If I have to guess, uh, 30%? Wrong, less than 5%. Less than 5 wow. Yeah. That's even lesser than Australia. Australia, Australia is 25%. Wow. I mean, I heard the, the big reason there's such a huge discrepancy is because Australia is cheaper. Like people pay like $30 for gym membership a month as compared to Singapore, which is like three times the price for Anytime Fitness or Fitness First, etc. I heard that's one of the reasons, but do you think the reason we have such low numbers is because we don't prioritize fitness in general as a country? Okay, this is a good question. 5%, let's say the figure is 5%. Yeah. I think the... One in 20. The, the one with what? One in 20%. One in 20, wow. Has um, a gym membership, that's 5%. Okay, because um, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm based in the CBD, so a lot of the folks in CBD, I, I realize they do have membership. Mm -hmm. So I guess the average Singaporean, maybe if they are not within the age of 20 to 45, they probably don't have a gym membership. I mean, that's what I'm guessing. I, I, may, be, I may be wrong. Why do you think the number is low anyways? Like in terms of the percentage, if it is true, why do you think Singapore doesn't have that many people going to the gym? Yeah, because I think Singapore is pretty health conscious. So I'm actually surprised at the yeah, 5%. Yeah, wow. as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know if the don't statistic know. is true though, but it was given to me by a franchise seller. Like she was telling me that the numbers are very low here, so that's still a huge market. But that makes sense. I guess people in the CBD area would have more membership because they have more buying power anyways. Do you feel like the Singaporean diet is optimal though for a beach bot? Uh, to be honest, no. If you are eating hawker food every day, it's hot. Okay, forget it's hawker hot. food. Forget hawker food. Let's say you're a Chinese or Indian or Malay, right? As a typical Singaporean's ethnicity, right? And you're eating home food every day. Do you think that is enough to get a beach bot? Like traditional Chinese, traditional, traditional Malay, Chinese, traditional Indian, Indian yeah. food. Just the average, even the average mm. Singaporean household, right? With Chinese, Indian, Malays. Do you think if they just ate their mom's food every day, they could mm. get a beach bot? Okay, the, the, problem, the problem with local food is it's delicious. It's fucking delicious. But it comes with a lot of calories. It's high fat, it's high carbs, and low protein in general, because Asian diet, we tend to be more cup heavy. And the way like some of the dishes are made, they, ha they heavily fry it. So the fat content is very high. So if you want a good physique, you will have to switch the macros. You have to go high protein, mm. meat, moderate to low carbs, mm. and moderate to low fat in order to sustain uh, a good mm. body, which is not, which is not uh, the typical Asian diet not a typical uh, local diet. So if you really want to sustain a good physique long term, you have to change the mentality that I have to make some changes to my food. I can't just eat what I'm eating and ex expect a miracle. If you want tips on how to still incorporate local food into your diet and maybe just change a few things here and there and get your dream physique, you can always hit me up on IG. Mm, okay, yeah. follow train with me. That's right. <laughs> okay, so the answer is no, you can't. If you if only you eat local food now. Nah. Right, right. Really. Okay. So would you say because of that, the Westerners have an advantage because they usually have a high protein diet as compared to us people? Mm, in general, yes. Um, and they prep their food a lot more because eating out is expensive if we're talking about the Western countries. So most of them, they, will have, they have a culture of mm. cooking their own food, preparing their own food, which is a lot better when it comes to calories because you control what you put into your food. Mm. If you were eating outside, it's just a guess. Like this chicken chop, it, it looks like 500 calories, but you never know, it might go as high as 900 calories mm. because of all the oil, the butter they use to make it delicious. So it's a, it's a lot of guessing if you eat mm. outside. So if you really want to achieve a good physique, and in a short period of time, you have to make some compromise, compromises on uh, the food choices that you have. So would you say meal prep or prepping food at home is uh, a waste of time or do you think it is essential when you want to get a good physique? Yeah, it's essential. I think it's essential. If you want to really bring your body fat down to a low level, you have to 
at some point start to cook some of your own meals. Yeah, I mean, if you just want a general physique, you don't want your abs, just want to look good, feel good, but not six packs, um, yeah, you can still eat outside and make better choice, more changes here and there to get the physique. But if you want to drop down to 10% for guys, beach board, maybe 15%, 16% for ladies, the abs, you need to start cooking, you need to start being a lot more mindful on what you eat. I feel like the biggest problem with meal prep is the preparing and cleaning up. So <laughs> would you say like ordering meal prep services is worth it or would you still say that cooking is still much better? Because one problem I had ordering meal prep is it tastes super bland and fucking bland. Yeah, it is. But yeah. Convenience and you don't have to like, like what you say, you don't have to clean up the dishes, you don't have to cook. It's a lot easier. So if you're someone who can compromise on the taste, then yeah. Mm. It's a good compromise. And meal prep is a bit more expensive than cooking on your own. Like so the meal prep um, delivery services is a bit, a bit more expensive. I think it goes, it starts from around 10 yeah. to 20 or even I think maybe yeah. higher. Yeah, so if you cook, like um, prep your own food, it's a lot more cost effective. So you're trading time for money or money for time out. Exactly. Okay. Do you meal prep your own food or do you cook at home? Or what's the mm. process for you like? I would say at this point, it's more like 50-50 because I do long hours um, at the gym. I can't possibly cook all my all my three meals unless I'm, I'm going for a con contest prep, then I'm forced to. But at this point, I found a, found a good balance about 50-50 yeah, eating at home, 50 and 50 eating outside. It's a good balance for me. Sometimes I feel like when you're a personal trainer, you forget to train yourself. Does that happen with you often or are you always like, okay, I prioritize my physique before I go and train my clients, what is your thought process on that? To be fair, when you when you walk on the street, when you go to the gyms, do you see all the trainers? Do they are they all in shape? Most of them are not Most all. Of them, yeah. Yeah. Have you seen like big size trainers? Yes, quite yeah. a fair bit. Yeah. I mean they may be good at what they're doing, but sometimes after a few years of training they, they are not motivated to train themselves anymore. I don't think that's the best approach because you are you are the product. You have to do what you preach. Yeah, so that's, that's just me. There'll, there'll be months where you might not be as motivated because if you've done this for years, there, there's, it's not always gonna be like rainbows and sunshine. So some days you might feel not as motivated, but then if you want a good physique, you have to find a way to maintain your routine, make sure you're consistent. Consistent is the key. You gotta be consistent. Mm. Yeah, consistency is the key. Okay, so do you train often every week? Do you have a minimum amount that you train every week? Uh, yes, if I'm if I'm in Singapore, I will be training at least three to four times a week. Okay. Yeah, even if I'm overseas, I will make it a point to at least even a holiday. I will try to work out at least once a week. What's the next step for you in your business? Well, there's a few ways to scale to expand your business as a freelance trainer. Some trainers may start their own like a team. They will hire a few new like students, interns under them, or trainers under them, and expand from there. Some, they might open their own gym. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it if you're a freelance trainer. Some go online, but Singapore, I would say it's not a, it's not a big market for online, mm. online training. So I'll just speak about the, the in local co context. Yeah, so I would say those two, either they start their own gym or they hire more trainers under them. Okay. What would you be going towards then in the near future? Oh, that's a good question, but... In the next five years? Next five years. What do you see yourself doing? Do you see yourself owning a gym? Do you see yourself uh, transitioning online or do you see yourself... That's a good question. I will give you the answer when I have it. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay. I mean, in the meantime, you can just earn your six figures. Uh. I mean, for at, at this point, I'm training like a, a few trainers. Nothing is concrete, so I'm not going to say much. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Now, I, there's been a saturation of a lot of gyms recently in the CBD, man. I oh, feel yeah. like gyms are popping yeah. up every 30 seconds in Singapore right it now. Is, yeah. What? How do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, it doesn't affect what I do. I still have a good base of clients. I'm, I know what I can offer and those who train with me know what, what I can do for them. So I wouldn't be too worried about competition. But if I mean, if I'm a gym owner, then yes, probably I will be worried about like so many gyms popping up around CBD. Mm. I think even even like the neighborhoods outside of CBD, I think there's a lot of gyms yeah. popping up. Like any, any time fitness, any like, you see so many yeah, everywhere. So many. Like it's like seven eleven. like yeah. a few, you walk a few meters that you see yeah. another any, any time fitness. fitness. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. I don't know how the business model works. Yeah. so. 
yeah. can't really comment much. Right, right. Yeah, there's a huge saturation of gyms in Singapore, not just in CBD, but in the neighborhood area as well. Like uh, Anytime Fitness, there's 90 and then uh, GoFit is also coming along to compete with Anytime Fitness. Do you feel that this is good for Singapore since there's going to be a lot more mm. gyms in the next five years? Well, up? it's definitely good for the consumers. They get more choices. Um, as a business owner, probably probably not. You have to stand out even more to win over your competition. You really have to be good. You cannot just open a gym and expect it to work because there's so many competition. People got more choices. So I guess it's the same as social media in general. It's saturated. People are doing their business. They are promoting their stuff on Instagram. Everyone's selling something. So how do you stand out? You have to be the best. So on a, from a consumer point of view, I think it's great for them. But from a business owner point of view, well, you have to know your shit and you have to be good at what you do in order to survive. Would you consider opening your own gym? Ah, uh, no. no. Why not? Yeah. Just not my thing. Yeah. Why isn't it your thing? That's a good question. I'll give you the answer when I have it. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I have uh, always uh, considered opening up a gym since I consult a lot of gyms if they are marketing. I was like, why not open up one? But the model for Anytime Fitness or Go Fit Fitness is, is very, very uh, easy. It's basically when you open to break even, you only need 300 members a month doing membership. Yeah, most of these uh, gyms. So in those neighborhood areas when they open up, they only need 300 members and those neighborhoods have 300? Only 300? Members wow. To break even. Yeah. Okay. Or at least that's what uh, I've seen on the back end mm. to break even. And then anything after that is profit. And then uh, their model is obviously you can't have 300 people coming to the gym at yeah. once. You only can have like less than 5% to come into the gym and then you'll already be a bit stuffy, you know. How do you feel about that model? Do you feel like that's a counterproductive model? Like shouldn't everybody be using the gym every single day or at least three times a week. The gyms are smart. They, they they know for a fact that not everyone who signs up, they go for it. In fact, I think more than 50% of people who sign up for the gym, they don't really go regularly. They have the intent to go to the gym when they sign up, but most of them, they, they end up after one or two weeks or maybe even one month or two months, they stop going, even though they probably sign up for a full year. Mm -hmm. That's how the gyms know they can over sign members, but still know that not the full amount will turn up, so there will be enough space for the gym to mm. operate. Is there a difference in the way you train a man and a woman in your own personal training? If you're asking like phys physiological point of view, I would say the training would be more similar than it is different. For example, um, guys and girls both will benefit from full body workout and with equal emphasis on the upper and lower body. In general, unless they specifically want to train upper body more, which men most likely like to focus more on the upper body. They want the beach board, they want nice arms, chest, shoulders, and girls, they want the big booty. That's the trend right now. Uh, big legs. Mostly the females will focus more on the lower body. And one big difference is uh, female tend to have better endurance, so they can actually rest some is a lot shorter than a male. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a small that. difference here and there, but I wouldn't be too worried about that. Yeah. Both of them are more similar than they are different. Okay. If somebody wants to get a gym membership or personal training and they are trying to get into the best shape of their life, what would you recommend? Would you recommend they start slow, try gym first, or would you recommend just jump straight into personal training? And they've never trained a day in their life. If you want fast, accelerated results, it's best to go to a trainer. Because firstly, they will help you cut short the learning curve. And you don't have to waste time learning on from YouTube, trial and error, which can take months before you even learn a fraction of what you can learn from a trainer because the trainer already knows what your step-to-step -step process is for beginner for intermediate for advanced so if you have the financial capability i would say go straight for a trainer your time is money you don't want to waste time doing all this random stuff which you can better put in your business mm. uh, time with family but i mean if you're young and you don't you're not financially uh, well enough to for a trainer then yeah take your time learn from your friends watch youtube try it out hopefully you don't injure yourself in the process yeah who's one youtube influencer or fitness influencer you look at regularly or you really like their stuff i like uh more plates more dates Derek. he more talks plates, about more dates. yeah he talks about all of the drug users in the industry etc so i really like watching his stuff at as well I, I used to watch quite a bit of his stuff 
and the uh, classic Mike Chang back in the Mike Chang, yeah. I follow a lot of Mike Chang's movie. Actually, you look Is like the guy still alive. He's alive. He's in Bali, yeah. bro. Oh. Apparently, last I heard. He made a good life. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he's um he retired as a millionaire selling his online courses. But yeah, it remind me of uh actually Mike Chang. Now that I mentioned <laughs> Singapore, well, I, Mike I hope, Chang. I hope that's a compliment. <laughs> there you go. He's a good looking guy, man. Uh, but yeah, do you have any influences you. Uh, that you looked up, uh, look look up to, or currently still? To be honest, I don't really follow much many uh, fitness influencers. I, uh, one person that stood out for me is uh, Elliot House. Mm. He used to be heavily into working out and strength training, but now he has moved to a different space. He's more spiritual. He's more like giving advice, life advice for men in general. So that's one person I, I still look up to and follow him closely on IG and his social media. Elliot House. Elliot House, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen him. Big buff black guy. Yeah. With blue eyes, right? Yeah. Oh, Grey eyes. Uh, he's like a fatherly figure now. Nice. Yeah, he's moved away from speaking about fitness and strength training to life in general, giving advice for young men who need like the fatherly figure yeah. to guide them in life. So yeah, you guys are awesome. Nice. If uh, anyone needs advice, where should they find you? Well, you can ask Simon if you want to know about social media stuff, how to create viral content, marketing. He's the man to go to. If you want training advice, you want to transform your body, you want to start making a difference in your physique, you can hit me up at Train with Wayne, IG at train.with.wayne. That's where you can <laughs> nice. find me. Do you have a YouTube as well? I do, I do. Okay. I'm not as active on YouTube compared to IG. That's where you can find me mostly. I'm pretty active every day. I post stories, videos, and I'm pretty active on IG. Mm. Okay, awesome, man. All right, thanks for coming, man. Appreciate your time, bro. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for hearing me talk. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Fine, good stuff.